In Search of Lost Consciousness Author, Jose Antonio Cuna e Silva Why Change the Spiritist Language? Jose Antonio Cuna e Silva was born in Brazil. He was born exactly where he lived his past life. At the end of 1980, after intense search for access to the spiritual world and to his distant past, he knew physical technique for the achievement of self-consciousness. This fact led him to change his understanding of spiritism and to know the true reason for its creation. Thus, during these 13 years practicing physical technique for the achievement of self-consciousness, it was possible to experience the awakening of consciousness where everything can be relearned and the understanding of the great symphony of life can be expanded in an unlimited way. Authors note In order to make it easy the understanding of the foundation of this work, we find it well to place this note that names the sources and clarifies to the reader the type of reading that lies ahead. This book intends to bring to Spiritism a new vision of its basic principles, changing the form by changing the language so that the essence resplendent with the brilliance of the new understanding. This path of change is the obligatory route through which Spiritism must go through, for the particular inertia is stagnation as the whole set goes on. The content of the book has as sources. The Spirit's Book by Allan Kardec, 1957 The Possibilities of Infinity, From a Third Degree Contact to the Achievement of Self-Consciousness, by Bianca, 1987 Life Inside Life, by Bianca, 1990 The set of teachings taught both in the physical and extra-physical world that form the very philosophical basis of physical technique for the achievement of self-consciousness. The experience and teachings received by the author in more than 12 years of learning in the spiritual world during his journeys out of the body. Participation in spiritist works, both in the material world and in the spiritual world. How Everything Happened In 1973, after searching for knowledge about the spiritual world, I became spiritist. First, I have the opportunity to read several books on the subject. I even joined several spiritual organizations, attended courses in parapsychology, astral projection, in other words, I tried to know everything that relates to the spirit and spiritual world. On the doctrine of spiritism I managed to gain knowledge over the years both through the study of works and also through my experiences in the spiritualistic works of asterisk cardesista and umbandista guidance. Even though I was a spiritist and having achieved a certainty of the continuity of life in the spiritual world, inside me there was still an eagerness and desire to discover a way to access the spiritual world. I believed that, as well as proceeding, I would get all information that I wished about myself. It was with this state of mind, at the end of 1980, I had contact with physical technique for the achievement of self-consciousness. In short time of practicing the exercises taught to me, I had the opportunity to prove the effectiveness of the method. I discovered that in addition to being an objective and safe way to connect with the spiritual world, it was also a way of accessing my own person in the current configuration, as well as in other lives that I lived in other eras, in different bodies. At last, it was my story unfolding before me and I, as a solitary spectator, could relearn it in all its details. The years have passed, and the teachings and experiences of the spiritual world have been increasing, bringing me, consequently, a greater understanding of the material and spiritual worlds. Teachings never before imagined were received by me during the rest period of my physical body, forming new records in my memory. A new angle opened up where I could see life in new colors, inviting me, imperatively, 
to change. This change was necessary to my concept about the past, present, and future. In the same way, the understanding of the material and spiritual dimensions were becoming crystalline, moving away the troublesome questions. These teachings that I have been received in the moments when I leave my body and enter into the spiritual dimension have led me to think that it is a single and interpenetrate two similar worlds, material and spiritual, which are manifested only by the vibratory frequency. It is following this principle that the human being is essentially coupled to a matter, physical body, of another frequency, material, whose process is called incarnation. It is easy to imagine that my understanding as a spiritist would change. This change happened of a very accentuated form, since I had an opportunity to watch, directly in the spiritual world, various phenomena in the books of doctrine. These experiences and teachings acquired in the moments I left my physical body contributory in a decisive way both to increase my knowledge as well as to widen my horizons. In mid-1988, in a meeting in the spiritual world, I was summoned by a spirit who leads the spiritual movement on earth to cooperate with spiritism in a more direct and objective way. Firstly, I should write about this other side of life, focusing on important points of the spiritist teachings, within the understanding that I acquired in extracorporeal experiences. In a second moment, I should then begin the practical work within spiritism already using a new language. This new form of interchange with the spiritual world will be processed quite differently from the present. The people who are on the other side of life and who will act in the physical world will present themselves as they really are. There is no need to play a role, even using fictitious names as they usually do in our day. A summons, without prior notice, caused me surprise. I have, however, taken a resolution to accept the charge, even though I know I am not able enough for the job. I have tried, on the other hand, to regard it as a task that someone has to do. So, within my limits, I propose to fulfill this commitment, offering the best of my efforts. Preface Many years, twelve in all, I've been lived what we could call a wonderful adventure of a hunter. I became, over time, a hunter of myself. If I used to be the hunting frightened, with no right destination, to walk where other people walked, today I am the hunter who has finally found his hunt. But what about the future? The future I hold in my hands. But it is important to witness what happens to the person when he or she consciously has the opportunity to witness the coming of consciousness. There are innumerable profound changes that take place over time, as much in the physical body as in the human being who possesses it. You can distinguish them from each other perfectly. Initially almost everything is imperceptible. It is too subtle for the senses that are quite asleep to perceive such changes. But as you continue on the great journey of the search for consciousness you begin to perceive the imperceptible to feel the insensible and to see what was previously invisible. A great certainty that we really are human beings hangs over us. A great sense of knowledge to the Creator lodges within us, bringing with us a vague remembrance that we had known Him before and that we had forgotten Him, but now we find Him again. We can represent the journey toward self-consciousness as a road that circles around ourselves. With every turn we do instead of moving away from ourselves, we have come closer and we have come to see further. Do we feel better than other people around us? No, but we come to understand more deeply how big is the problems that afflict the human being. Among them the most terrible, the unconscious. 
but crossing the swamp of unconsciousness to reach the seas of full consciousness is no easy task. It is to open your own guts, it is to rip the book of death and rewrite the book of life. It is to die and be born again in the same body. In this adventure we have to get rid of all our psychological aggregates, we have to expel our egos, take off and throw away our masks and end our characters so that only we, eternal human beings, live. Is it a fight between David and Goliath? Truly it is. Victory, however, is within reach of anyone who dares want it. Every good fight leads to a great victory, knowing where our steps take us, everything becomes easier, the natural difficulties of the walk are presented as a hindrance for a journey that has time to finish. When we walk at sunrise the night will never reach us. It is the flight of the eagle that will eternally fly. We truly need to break the born-slash-reborn cycle. And for that is necessary to change. Change begins when man begins to know himself, for in him is the knowledge of his fellow man, the mysteries of life and the possible understanding of the Creator himself. For planet Earth there is only one way out, humanity becomes conscious. For mankind there is only one way out, man becomes consciousness. For man there is only one way out, he becomes conscious. These three statements lead us to a conclusion, all of the imbalances, the anomalies, the deviations, the suffering and the pain that afflict the human being have a single origin and a single responsible one, the human unconsciousness. All the more that is attributed as cause and as responsible for these facts that occur with our humanity is only an attempt to find an explanation for what is not known and at the same time to blame someone for a guilt that does not exist. This statement brings down all human culture related to destiny, karma, the law of cause and effect, sin and punishment. In the darkness of unconsciousness, the one that takes other path or injures someone by not recognizing him as a brother cannot be blamed. The light of consciousness cannot be given, but achieved. This is because achievement means gradual acquisition and consequent adaptation, while giving means the abrupt change from darkness to light which would lead one to blindness, unbalance and probably insanity. Spiritism is a help that came from the high. It is a soft path that allows the spiritual world to come to the physical world, rediscovering again the connection between man and his origin, preparing it for the arrival of consciousness. When man advances and moves the steps towards consciousness he must fly, and spiritism at this moment must provide the wings that will lead him to the fields of true understanding and greater wisdom. Introduction A sad reality presents itself to man, and a question remains in his mind, what will be his destiny after the phenomenon called death? From a simple retrospective of the past he concludes that during the stage in dense matter he did not obtain the knowledge and preparation for this moment of such great importance. From this arise dramas and tragedies, for the unknown causes fear, anguish and suffering. Nothing more terrifying than losing one's individuality in the intimate structure of being, expelling common sense and reason to distant lands. In this state of almost mental despair, he tries to grasp the old ideas he has always heard, the marvelous and indolent paradise that presents itself to him, Lucifer inviting him to the imminent rescue of his sins in the cauldron of hell. Suddenly, from his trapped mind, there comes a saving hope, eternal sleep. Yes, as he had heard so many times, eternal sleep will lead him to the safe harbor of the last judgment, when, miracle of miracles, even dead in matter, he will lift up his human rags and come back to life. Although these ideas run in his tired and suffering mind, 
in the innermost part of his being echoes a pleading cry for help, for the immortal spirit knows that just as the shipwrecked person needs something solid to lean on, he needs the truth to support himself. All of this conduct of man in the face of the inevitable loss of physical body was analyzed in depth by the leaders of the spiritual world. The analysis was not restricted to the material life, but extended to the behavior of the human being, as incarnated, where it was verified that reason gave place to the instincts and the feelings were transformed into blind passions, born by matter. Such an attitude was contrary to the natural laws left by the Creator, while at the same time harming man himself on his journey towards the big knowledge. It was thus that these leaders of the spiritual world decided to create a plan that could constitute an insurance against this harmful program imposed on the incarnated human being, while at the same time providing a cure for its pernicious effects. These distorted and distant teachings of the great reality that pervades the material and spiritual dimensions are so damaging that, in addition to affecting physical life, they are incorporated into the human person, accompanying him to the spiritual world after the loss of the physical body, where they become real mental prisons. It comes to the point that disembodied people remain dead in the spiritual dimension due to the orientations received in the physical world. The awakening of these people is difficult and painful and is only made possible by the selfless collaboration of the workers of the spiritual world, who do not mind working so hard to help man to regain consciousness. The acceptance of these distorted teachings only happens due to the state of human unconsciousness, since a person who has full consciousness does not accept this type of teaching. This spiritual aid was and is still necessary, for a planetary accident made man unconscious, and the night of unconsciousness robbed his past and his knowledge. Thus it was necessary to help him to face the great challenge to live without knowing who he was, what he was and why he was here, incarnated in a world full of contradictions where the fragility of reason walked alongside powerful sick feelings and emotions. Thus Spiritism was born, an integrative movement of the material and spiritual being. A Comforter Spiritism was becoming a line of work with its own colors, often difficult to accept by our little understanding, but not far from the first goal that is the pursuit of lost consciousness. The story of the seed of Spiritism, however, is lost in the night of time. Of the eleven races that began the settlement of the earth, it was only the black race, because of its characteristics of goodness and passivity, that kept the record of the spiritual world. It was through this race that our contact with the extra-physical dimension could be restarted and later structured spiritism itself with its various lines of work. The group of people who had as objective the work in the physical and spiritual worlds at the same time, chose black matter for its incarnations, since it possessed those attributes already mentioned.